Yes, I think we have to assume <clears throat> that if we continue down this path of attacking Russia, that we could easily end up in the crosshairs of Russian forces. Now, those could begin with conventional weapons, but it would seem almost inevitable that if you involve Russia proper and the United States, that it could escalate to the nuclear level very quickly. Well, I think you're dealing with a class of uh, politicians, uh, both in Western Europe as well as in uh, the United States, who are part of a larger uh, globalist class that sees its power in jeopardy. Uh, we have many governments in Europe that I doubt very seriously will last much longer because of the enormous damage that their governments have done to their own people as a result, not just of Nord Stream 2, but all of these sanctions that have backfired badly. As Colonel Douglas McGregor has consistently highlighted, the Kursk region has become a focal point of intense military strategy, with both sides vying for control of this critical area. Welcome to today's comprehensive update on the Kursk front where the battle rages on into its sixth day. Kursk, a region of immense strategic value, has become the epicenter of this fierce conflict. In today's report, we'll break down the developments, analyzing each significant move and its implications for the broader war effort. Stay with us as we dive deep into the tactical maneuvers and strategies at play. Reflecting the analysis provided by Colonel Douglas McGregor, Ukrainian forces have managed to push significantly beyond the Russian border defenses in the central region of Kursk. Their advance has been meticulously planned, with a clear trajectory originating from Plekovo, moving swiftly through Spano and Kamishno, and now establishing a presence in Giri. This push is not merely a territorial grab, it is a calculated effort to sever the critical logistical routes that sustain Russian operations in the southern regions, particularly around Sudja. Let's take a closer look at this. The Ukrainian strategy here involves cutting off the lifelines that feed the Russian war machine. By doing so, they hope to isolate Russian forces in the south, potentially leading to a broader collapse of Russian control in this sector. The implications of this, if successful, could be catastrophic for Russian operations in the wider region. As we continue, it's important to analyze how these movements are impacting the overall stability of the border area. In line with our expectations, yesterday afternoon, Ukrainian forces advanced into Giri, quickly claiming control over a series of villages in the area. However, it's crucial to understand the nature of this control. Unlike the fortified positions held by Russian forces in other regions, the situation here is fluid, with no significant Russian defenses to challenge the Ukrainian presence. This has allowed Ukraine to declare control over these areas, but this control is tenuous at best. Should Russian reinforcements arrive, Ukraine's hold on Giri could be swiftly contested. Moreover, the lack of Russian defensive infrastructure in this region reflects a strategic calculation by Moscow. Instead of spreading their forces then across the border, they've concentrated them in more critical areas, such as Belgorod, where the defensive lines are much stronger. This approach suggests that Russia is willing to trade space for time, allowing Ukraine to overextend before launching a decisive counterattack. But as we shift our focus, we see a stark contrast in the defensive strategies employed by Russia, particularly in Belgorod. Colonel Douglas McGregor has often emphasized the importance of strong defensive positions in modern warfare, and the Belgorod front serves as a textbook example. Here, Ukrainian forces have faced stiff resistance, unable to breach the heavily fortified Russian defenses. Belgorod has been a focal point of Russian defensive preparations long before the current campaign, reflecting its strategic importance. The defensive lines here are robust, with multiple layers of fortifications designed to absorb and repel sustained assaults. Despite several attempts, Ukraine has been unable to make significant inroads into Belgorod. The sheer scale of the defenses, coupled with the high concentration of Russian troops, has rendered Ukrainian advances ineffective. This failure underscores the challenges Ukraine faces when confronting well-prepared Russian positions, a stark contrast to their successes in the less defended areas like Giri. While Ukraine struggles to make headway in Belgorod, they have shifted their focus to other areas where Russian defenses might be more vulnerable. As highlighted by Colonel Douglas McGregor, the Sudja region presents both opportunities and challenges for Ukrainian forces. In the Sudja region, south of Giri, Ukrainian forces are applying pressure with a dual-pronged strategy. Their primary objective is to sever the crucial supply lines that connect Russian forces in the north to the southern fronts. By doing so, they aim to create a choke point, isolating Russian units and potentially forcing a withdrawal or collapse. 
The secondary goal is to open a new front in the southern part of Suja, further stretching Russian defenses. This strategy, if successful, could significantly undermine Russia's ability to sustain its operations across the broader theater of war. The Suja region's logistical importance cannot be overstated. It serves as a vital artery for Russian supplies and reinforcements. Disrupting this flow would not only impact the immediate battlefront, but could have cascading effects on Russia's overall military capabilities in the region. As we continue to monitor these developments, attention must be given to the troop movements and concentrations further north. In a development that echoes the strategic thinking of Colonel Douglas McGregor, Ukraine has concentrated a substantial number of troops near Hlukiev with a specific focus on the Tekino area. These troops are not merely stationed here, they are preparing for what could be a major offensive. The proximity of these areas to the border makes them ideal launching points for operations aimed at deeper incursions into Russian territory. Yesterday afternoon, Ukrainian forces initiated artillery bombardments in Tekino, signaling the start of a larger campaign. The strategic significance of these locations cannot be ignored. Controlling Hlukiev in Tekino would give Ukraine a foothold from which to launch further attacks potentially disrupting Russian defensive lines and creating opportunities for breakthroughs. The road networks in this region offer Ukraine a significant logistical advantage, allowing for rapid troop movements and resupply. This is reminiscent of the dynamic scene in Bakhmut, where control of key roads played a crucial role in the outcome of the battle. In Hlukiev and Tekino, Ukraine hopes to replicate this success, but much depends on the strength and readiness of Russian defenses. Despite these aggressive maneuvers by Ukraine, Russian commanders remain composed and strategic in their response. On the Russian side, the response has been measured and strategic. While Ukrainian forces push deep into Russian territory, Russian military commanders are executing a comprehensive strategy designed to neutralize these advances. A key element of this strategy has been the use of ambushes to disrupt Ukrainian supply lines and convoys Drone footage from recent engagements shows the effectiveness of these tactics, with entire Ukrainian convoys being decimated by precision strikes. The losses on the Ukrainian side are severe, with reports indicating up to 400 casualties in the northern sector alone, including Kharkiv and Sumy. Out of these, 360 casualties were concentrated on the Sumy-Kursk front, marking a significant blow to Ukrainian forces. In addition to personnel losses, Ukraine has also suffered heavy equipment losses, including several Bradley fighting vehicles. These losses are particularly significant given that these vehicles are part of Ukraine's elite 82nd Brigade, which has been redeployed from other critical fronts to bolster the offensive in Sumy. The fact that Ukraine is pulling forces from multiple fronts to concentrate on Sumy suggests a high risk, high reward strategy that could leave them vulnerable elsewhere. These developments set the stage for what could be a pivotal moment in the conflict as both sides prepare for the next phase of this intense battle. Ukraine's decision to redeploy forces from critical fronts such as Charsiv Yar, Lugansk, and Tretsk to the Sumy region highlights the high stakes of their current strategy. This redeployment includes elements of the 82nd Brigade, a unit that has been heavily engaged in some of the fiercest fighting of the war. By concentrating these forces in Sumy, Ukraine is placing a significant bet on achieving a breakthrough in this region. However, this strategy is not without risks. By pulling forces from other contested areas, Ukraine may inadvertently weaken its positions on those fronts, creating opportunities for Russian counterattacks. The decision to concentrate such a large force in Sumy suggests that Ukraine views this region as pivotal to the outcome of the broader conflict, but with high reward comes high risk and the potential for overextension looms large. As the conflict continues to evolve, the balance of power in the Kursk region will be determined by the ability of both sides to adapt to the rapidly changing dynamics on the ground. The coming days will be critical in shaping the future of this conflict. And as we conclude, the importance of strategic control over Kursk and its surrounding regions cannot be overstated. In summary, the Kursk front has become a critical battleground in this conflict, with both sides employing complex strategies to gain the upper hand. Ukrainian forces have made notable advances, particularly in areas like Giri, but these gains are precarious and could be reversed as Russian countermeasures intensify. The battle for Kursk is not just about controlling territory, it's about breaking the enemy's will and determining the future direction of the war. As we continue to monitor the situation, it's clear that the outcome of this campaign will have far-reaching implications for both sides. 
The Kursk Front is not just another battleground, it's a decisive theater in a war that could reshape the geopolitical landscape. We will keep you updated on every development as it unfolds.